So the first question I'm going to address is regarding multiple time frames. So first thing I need to do is add some time frames on here to kind of demonstrate this. But first, before I get going, let me put today's workshop date in here. So, all right, there we go. So we got today's file name. We're ready to get started here. Um, all right, so let's see. Let me just... Uh, just gonna add a solver, just any solver on there. And next, I'm gonna add a time frame to this. So let's see, let me add, uh, I guess, a 15 minute time frame. All right, good. Got that 15 minute time frame added on there. Um, and you have to refresh your chart when you add a time frame, right? So that Refreshing the chart uh, is the only way to get Force Ninja Trader to build that 15 minute data for Bloodhound. Okay, so we have that 15 minute data built. Um, and let's see, let me just check one other thing here. I need to make sure that, yeah, all right. So we got Bloodhound on this other chart. So I'm just gonna set things up. All right, I'm just gonna leave this Bloodhound blank. So we can see Bloodhound on this chart is blank. And let's see. Actually, I'm going to remove this bar direction because we can't read the text. There we go. So we want to be able to read the text down here. All right. So you'll notice that uh, uh, the chart on the right here, right, it has two time frames. It has the 5 Renko and the 15 minute. And then the chart on the left we can see Bloodhound just has um, one time frame, right? The daily time frame uh, from this chart here. All right, so now to illustrate this, I'm going to shut down NinjaTrader. And then I'm going to restart it. So this little quirk that NinjaTrader does only happens when you um, shut down NinjaTrader or you like reload the workspace. And all right, so it didn't, all right, didn't do it this time. Um, it depends the, the order in which NinjaTrader loads up Bloodhound as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another Bloodhound on here. And I'm going to add another Bloodhound on here. So I'm just putting multiple Bloodhounds on here just to make sure that uh, I get a Bloodhound that loads up after the Bloodhound that has two time frames. Right, so I've got a bloodhound here that has two time frames and so oh actually here we go it there we go ninja trader just did it all right let's see i thought i added a second bloodhound on here i must have hit cancel by mistake all right let's click ok and let's see Interesting. Okay, so it's only happening to this chart here, but um, let me kind of draw on here to help. All right, is this going to draw? Hmm. Looks like Ninja's not letting me draw for some reason. That's weird.
There we go. All right, so you notice how this this upper bloodhound has a five rank on a 15 minute time frame. And this bloodhound has this one minute time frame added to it. So, and if I, let's see, we need to open up both of these bloodhounds here. All right, so this, this bloodhound, right, it does have a 15 minute time frame added to it. And if we open up the other one, let's open up this one. All right, so the second one, you can see it doesn't have a, a one minute time frame added to it. Right. However, if we look at the chart, we can see Ninja Trader saying that there's a five rank O and a one minute. So this extra one minute on here, this is added by Ninja Trader. So for some reason, Ninja Trader will just um, once once Ninja Trader loads a Bloodhound that has multiple time frames on it, it will force extra time frames onto the other bloodhounds that load up afterwards that load up secondarily so once 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 we get a bloodhound loading up with multiple time frames on it the ninja is going to force multiple time frames onto other bloodhounds that load up afterwards so and this is nothing to be worried about it's just some little quirk that ninja trader um does so it doesn't affect Bloodhound, you know, and you know, as I, as I sh showed you, you know, when we actually open up Bloodhound, we can see that there is no one-minute time frame in here, right? So it's not actually, so Bloodhound's not actually using that one-minute time frame, and it's not being affected by it. So it's just, you know, it's just a, a you know, a, a, what, a, a visual on the chart here. So, and. I'm going to do this one more time. If I shut down Ninja Trader, and if I open it up again, we might see one of the the Bloodhounds on the daily chart on the left chart might have that extra one minute time frame put on it as well. And no, it doesn't. Maybe because it's a on a daily chart. Let's see. So we're gonna switch this to a five-minute chart. And I'll shut down Ninja again. And now we'll see if an extra one minute chart gets put on the Bloodhound that's on this left chart over here. And all right, no, it's not doing it. I guess, uh, oh yeah, it must be because this left chart is loading up first and then Ninja's loading up the right chart second. So yeah, so we're only getting this, this one Bloodhound over here. Yeah, we're only getting this yeah, the bloodhound over here in this chart this is the only one that's going to get the secondary uh or this you know extra one minute time frame placed on it but um i think that basically illustrates you know what ninja's doing and you know just don't worry about that no big deal so, all right so that's that and let me just get my data feed connected again and then we'll move on to some bloodhound questions. Kyle's is sim simply asking, how do you change the colors of various uh, signals on the same chart? Uh, well, you know, um, let's see here. Let me just, uh, once again, let me just uh, add um, a simple bar direction on here just so I can get some racing stripes on the chart, right? So uh, simply, you know, Bloodhound is just a, a simple indicator. And just like uh, all indicators, 
you just go to the plot section here. Right, go to the plots, and you can see there's a long confidence. So that's green. And there's a short confidence that's red. So there you go. Just change your green and red to whatever color you want there, Kyle. That's all you need to do. Something else that you could do, so if you do want multiple colors, um, and then, you know, then the only thing to do is to add another bloodhound. You could add a, you know, you can run two bloodhounds on your chart, and then of course take the second bloodhound and um, change your colors, you know, to whatever you want. Um, like so. Something like that, and you just have, you would have to you know split your um, you have to split your bloodhound template into the two different signals, right? And so you could do something like this. There you go. And you just take your uh, you know your existing template, uh, split it into two, um, right? Or you know or or you could just uh, create another logic template. Right, make a, you could uh, take your, you know, I don't have any logic templates to demonstrate, but, you know, if you've got a system in here, and you've got a system in here, uh, you just make a, a copy of it, and in your copy, uh, you know, you just plug in whatever signals you want into your result node and disconnect the other signals, right, and just between your two different um, between your, you know, your two different copies, you can decide which signals go into the result node and which signals don't, um, right? And then just rename your logic templates accordingly and just run your two different logic templates and two different bloodhounds uh, on the chart there, like that. And, uh, yes, okay, so Kyle's asking, have we thought about the ability of creating multiple plot colors? And yes, uh, we do. We will do that when Bloodhound 2.0 comes around. So when Bloodhound 2.0 comes around, it's going to be a, a complete revamp. It's going to have a lot more flexibility and functionality. Um, uh, yeah, it's 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 going to be uh, quite a bit different. Um, so, but you now that won't be for quite a while so we need to get uh, everything converted over to Ninja 8 first you know that's a much higher priority than Bloodhound 2.0 is so that's definitely quite a ways off all right, all right. so Alan's got a uh, <clears throat> has got a Bloodhound system uh, that I guess is providing continuous Bloodhound signals until the system reverses direction Right, uh, and so Alwyn wants to, to know how how do you get Raven to stay in the trade and only basically not exit but reverse when the system changes direction <clears throat> when a signal in the opposite direction is given here. Um, all right, so to better kind of understand that, let me. Um, yeah, let me build something here. All right, so don't need that far direction. All right, so let's see. All right, so I'm going to build a slope solver here that I think will kind of kind of um, simulate what Al Alwyn has. And I have an EMA 100 on my chart. So, all right, let's get this solver set up here. 
All right, so basically we're going to find the slope of the EMA 100. So let's change that SMA to an EMA. There's our EMA. We'll add that in here. So there's our EMA. And now we're going to change this to a 100 period. Oops, 100 period. All right, our EMA plot's already selected for us. We click OK. So now if we look at the chart, right, we can see the output is just kind of matching the slope of the EMA. Right, so what Alan wants to know is, you know, how do you how do you set Raven up so that um, it stays in the trade? So let's say we go right short. Let's say we go short there. So we want Raven to stay in the trade all the way down. Right, all the way down to here. And then instead of exiting, uh, we would just want to reverse. Uh, so I think that's it. Let me, uh, let me just reread the question again. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so there we go. That's this. That's uh, so. In other words, Alwyn wants to create a, uh, a system that's always in the market, right? So there's always a trade on and you're just reversing the trades back and forth, back and forth. Or, right, uh, so we'll use the simple EMA 100 to illustrate that in Raven. So let's close out Bloodhound. And next, and then we'll go into our strategies. We're gonna load up Raven. Raven down here. All right, and next we're going to load the Bloodhound template. Oops, it's all right. Go to File. There we go. All right, there's today's workshop. File. Load that up. There's our EMA 100 slope. We'll just take a look at our logic template. All right, there it is. Looks good. We can click OK. And now let's set up our entry logic. So this, this is our entry signals. There we go. There's our system. Now there's no exit. Uh, right? We always want to be in the market where Alwyn always wants to be, always wants to have a position open in the market. So there's no exit logic. Uh, we're just going to, uh, Alwyn just wants to reverse every time there's a a uh, entry signal in the opposite direction. All right. Um, and one thing that's critical is just make sure that this enter only when flat is left on false. Just leave it on its default. All right. Um, and let's see. Next, uh, let's see. Look, we'll we'll generate some back test results so we can actually see what what would happen. So we're gonna set start auto enabled on we're going to set that to true and now you see back test mode is becomes available and we'll, that's set to true as well now all right so with start auto enabled set to false back test mode is missing all right so you must have this start auto enabled set to true in order to do some back testing all right now since uh since this is going to be a um, always in the market system there's not going to be, there's no profit target, no stop loss. Let's leave those on zero. And then the last thing to do is just uh, enable the strategy. Just turn the strategy on. Click OK. And there we go. We can just take a quick look at a couple of these. All right, so so here we go. We got a long signal 
on that bar and so um, Raven opens a position as soon as the bar closes and then we got a short signal so then Raven has to reverse and then another long signal it reverses again right and then it just stays in the trade until the opposite signal comes along and so now in here we can see that you know obviously we're getting a, a bunch of flip-flopping on these signals here uh, and uh, Raven's just you know uh, flip-flopping back and forth but uh, basically Alan that's how you do it so, uh, all right um, All right, see, it looks like Alan's got some follow-up questions here. So he's asking, is it possible to enter a, a longer time frame signal and then exit on a shorter time frame signal? Uh, yeah, you bet. I mean, yeah, whatever, you know, you can build different entry signals and exit signals. You know, you can build those those signals in Bloodhound and then tell Raven to trade them for you. So the way we would do that uh, is all right so let me all right so just a sec while I get Raven off the off the chart here so I'm going to remove Raven first, and then I can go back in here and edit my Bloodhound system. So because Raven had the same file loaded up, it's, it's good practice to remove Raven from your chart since Raven has the same file loaded up because you don't want the same file in Raven to accidentally overwrite the work that you've done right because both bloodhound and raven can say will be saving back to the same file right because you got the same file loaded in multiple spots so uh, so just good practice to not have the same you know if you're editing a file if you're editing a, editing a bloodhound system you know if you got it open in multiple places um, it's a good idea to close that bloodhound file out in, in other in the other spots all right so um let's see all right so let me set my chart up here all right so let's say we'll make this a one minute chart There we go, make those bars a little wider. All right, so we've got a one minute chart. Let's open up Bloodhound again. So let's put on a higher time frame. So let's put on a 10 minute chart. And um, I'll just do something real simple here. I'll just copy this solver. I'll move it down. So there we go. So we've got an EMA 100 on a 10 minute chart and an EMA 100 on on the default time frame right and our default time frame is the one minute chart right since Bloodhound is running on a one minute chart then Bloodhound's default time frame is one minute right so the default time frame always matches whatever the chart is set to uh, all right so let's go back into into here um, and so let's we'll call this um, we'll rename this uh, let's see here, the entry all right so Alvin's question is about you know let's enter 
on a higher time frame. So here's our solver on a 10 minute time frame. All right, so you notice how it, it says 10 minute above the solver. So that tells us that this is the solver on the 10 minute time frame chart. So let's plug that in. So here we go. So the EMA 100 on the higher time frame, the 10 minute higher time frame, that's going to be our, our entry here. And we'll create a new logic template. So, um, and we'll let's see, we'll do EMA 100 at exit. And so, for the exit signal, once again, we'll just use the the default time frame, which is the one minute chart that we're running on. And we can use this as our exit signals like that all right so our our entry is coming from the 10 minute chart and our exit is coming from the default time frame or the one minute chart all right, so let's take a look at the solvers again here. So we have a the default time frame is set to uh, one minute. That's what our chart's on. And then we have a secondary time frame of 10 minutes, a 10 minute chart. Here. All right, so now we've got this built. And since we added that 10 minute chart time frame, we need to refresh so we can get NinjaTrader to build that for us. All right, next, let's pull up Raven again. There's Raven. And let's load today's Bloodhound template. All right, there it is. Okay, so there's our two different EMA 100s on the different time frames. Okay, let's just go over here and make sure everything looks good. All right, the exit looks good the entry looks okay as well all right we'll click okay and now we just need to set our entry and our exit so we'll set our entry there you go to the logic template that we named entry and our exit logic we'll set that to the logic template that says exit on it so there we go and once again um you know, we're just using these, you know, entries and exits. So there's no profit or stop loss. So we'll just leave those set to zero. Um, let's see. Well, let's see. We'll take start auto enabled. We'll set that to true and we'll generate some, some, some uh, back test results so we can actually kind of see on the chart where the trades are taking place. And then, then, last thing to do is don't forget to enable it let's turn it on all right so let's take a look here all right so there we go there's our there's an entry and um, let's see here. Uh, and oh, right, right, okay. Yeah. So keep in mind. So you notice how the um, right we get the green racing stripes way over here, but it took an entry over here. Well, keep in mind we have Bloodhound on the chart. And then we have Raven on the chart down here. So if you look at the Raven down here, you can also uh, keep an eye on the name. So down here it says Raven. All right. So Raven, I've set, I've set Raven up. So you see how the button up here is orange? That's Raven. The black button, that's Bloodhound. Right, so Bloodhound is actually set to our, our exit logic. 
and Raven is set to show us our entry logic here. So Raven down here is showing us the entry signals. Right, and of course those entry signals are coming from the 10 minute time frame. And so there we go. Um, uh, the 10 minute time frame went long. So Raven went long. And then over here, and then over here on our one minute time frame, Remember over here on our one minute time frame, we have Blenheim telling us the one minute time frame. So over here, we got a short from the one minute time frame. And so then X, Raven exited the trade right there. And let's see if there's another trade that happens. No, not yet. Let's see, we'll just take another look at just one more trade here. All right, so here we go. Raven got a long signal right there. So there we go, there's our, our long trade. And then on the one minute chart, all right, we got a short signal so that that's our exit and so then raven exited right there all right and then so as soon as as soon as raven exited and went flat um what happened did you see right down here raven's getting continuous trade signals right so basically as soon as um raven exited let's see, let's mark the bar that raven exited yeah so you see uh oh that doesn't red on red doesn't show up very well let's uh that's another red one let's take this one there we go. So there's our little green dot. So Raven exited on that bar, and we can see right afterwards there was a short signal. Right, so we got all of these short signals going on here, continuous short signals all along here. So that's telling Raven, okay, take a short immediately. So therefore, Raven did go short on the next bar actually on the same bar. So actually Raven just reversed reversed the trade there. So Raven went short and then we got another exit signal from the one minute time frame. So exited and if we look down here at Raven's entry signals, you know, Raven still told go short go short go short and so raven goes short again afterwards all right so this is kind of i'm kind of ex expanding upon all of this just to help you guys understand what's going on um you know so uh this kind of shows some of the you know issues you might encounter if you build a system that has just continuous signals like this, right? So as long as there's continuous signals like this, Raven is going to keep putting you into a trade, you know, right after it exits. So what might be better to do in this case, so yeah, something that might be better to do in this case is to change our system alter our system around. So in order to do that, let me remove Raven. Let's 
Okay, then off the chart here. So we're back to Bloodhound. So instead of our entry signals being continuous like this, um, you know what we might what we might want to do is uh, let's see. So for this particular system, we're just using the slope direction, right? We're using the slope direction. So what I can do is instead use a inflection solver. Let's see. All right. Let's let me go back to the default time frame. So I'm going to set the 10 minute time frame solver aside here because it's kind of hard to visualize this 10 minute time frame when we're working on a one minute chart. So I'm going to go back to this solver, which is running on the on the one minute time frame. All right, so, uh, so this, so now, now the signals kind of match up, right? Um, so like right here, we can see the EMA sloping up, and so we're getting a long output, and then the EMA reverses down. We're getting a short output, right? So that all kind of makes sense now visually. We can all visualize that. And so to get rid of these continuous signals on the chart, what I can use is I'm going to make a new inflection solver here. So I'm going to grab this inflection solver. So another um, way of saying that inflection is like reversal point. So a inflection is a reversal point. So let's uh, put our indicator in there for the name. So there we go. So we're going to look at the inflection points of, for the uh, EMA. Let's do the EMA. There we go, the EMA 100. So let's change our indicator here to the EMA. And let's make sure it's a 100 period. Like so. All right, now let's look at the chart. All right, so now instead of having uh, continuous signals, right now we only have one trade signal. So now Raven won't try to keep putting you into a trade. Raven won't keep opening a new trade. It's only going to open a trade when the EMA changes directions like this. All right. uh, okay, so, so we built this on the one minute chart, but if we're wanting to trade from the higher time frame, then we need to put this guy on the 10 minute chart. So let's do that. So I'm going to put this up there, put this down here. And what I can do is switch over to my solver tab. And you see right there's the EMA 100 inflection solver. And it's on the default time frame. So what I can do is I'll select it and then hit the down button here. And you see now it moved down. And now it's underneath the 10 minute time frame. So now this EMA 100 inflection solver is on the 10 minute time frame. And if we go back to our logic uh, board, we can see now it says 10 minute. So now we have two solvers here, and they're both on the 10 minute chart. They're both on the 10 minute time frame. Okay, so now. If we put that into Raven, we'll get totally different results. So well, let me just get this all loaded up. I'm just going to repeat the whole process again. So we'll load up today's template file. 
And there's our new inflection solver. And let's take a look at the entry. There it is. That's our inflection solvers plugged in. All right, that looks good. So we'll just set up, set the entry and the exit logic templates again. All right, I'll turn on the start auto enabled so we can kind of see the trades on the chart. Practice mode is set to true. We'll just turn this back on. There we go. And so now, so you'll see, there we go. So there's our entry signals from the 10 minute chart. And you'll notice that we're going to get 10 signals in a row, right? That's because there's 10 one minute, one minute, uh, bars in there's 10 one minute bars in a 10 minute bar so that's why we're getting 10 uh, 10 long signals and we're getting 10 short signals there uh, but any uh, okay yeah so back to taking a look at this so there's our, our long signal and then and then we get a, you know, an exit signal on the one minute chart. And of course, there we go, Raven exits the trade right there. So, and since we had, since we had you know, a, a bunch of short entry signals there, uh, right? So all of these entry signals actually do exist inside of that one 10 minute bar. And it just happens that our, our exit signal happened when we also got a, um, a short signal from the 10 minute time frame. Let me tell you, you know, working with multiple time frames uh, <laughs> really, uh, really can uh, get confusing sometimes. But if you just work through it slowly, then you can, uh, you can work it all out and uh, understand it. But okay, so anyways, um, so we exited, and since Raven still had had some entry signals up, right? Raven took another short trade right there took a short. So that's what we're seeing right here is this short trade. And then here we go, Raven exited right there. So it took this exit signal and exited that short. And let's see, here we go. All right, so the next trade. So again, we got some entry signals from the 10 minute time frame. So Raven went long. And then over here, we got a exit signal from the one minute chart and Raven exited right there. And let's see, there's no more entries from the 10 minute time frame. And so that was that, that was the last trade right there. All right, so let's see. Um, all right, so Chris wants to build a signal that um, that's, goes with the direction of the super trend, but also wants to make sure that the bar direction is in the correct, you know, that the bar is going in the same direction with the super trend. So, all right, let's tackle that one next year. Let me get the super trend on here. All 
All right, there we go. So I've got the Supertrans U11 on this system here. Let me put that on the chart. All right, there's our Supertrans. Stretch the chart out a little bit. So here's kind of a, let's see. Let me see if I could find a bar that is going against the super trend. That's probably not ever going to happen. Um, hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, so um, Yeah, I think I'm kind of missing some. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of missing some uh, extra information. Oh, okay. hold on a sec here. Chris is Chris is kind of filling me in. Um, yeah. Okay. So, well, all right. So, basically, what I'm going to be building here for Chris is just kind of a filter that I think will add to his system um, and the reason why I say that is because every time I look at my chart you know the super trend only reverses and the bar is always in the direction of the super trend so right right there that's the bar that reversed the super trend um, if I keep going Right, it took an up bar to break the super trend and reverse and to reverse the super trend to a positive. But uh, um, so this is going to be kind of more of a filter and probably not so much as a entry signal. Um, so let's get Bloodhound open and uh, let's see. We'll start a new logic template. So, um, all right. So, we got the Anna Super Trend um, and the bar direction here. And, oh, okay. I see. All right. So Chris is actually using the bar direction as the entry signal, and he just wants them to be filtered with the, yeah, with the super trend. I get you. All right, so let's add a bar direction on here. So there's a bar direction. All right, pretty simple. Pretty simple. And. Next, we'll use the Anna Super Trend. And um, let's see. There's, with the Anna Super Trend, there's actually a couple of ways to do this. Uh, let's see. Let me, I'll, I'll show you kind of a unique way of using the Anna Super Trends, using the Anna Super Trends direction uh, filter. So. So what I've grabbed is the threshold solver. All right, and, uh, super trend, threshold solver, and I'll show you something uh, special about the Anna super trend here. And there are some other indicators that have this. Um, feature as well. So let's pull the Anna Super Trend up. There we go. And you'll notice that the Anna Super Trend has this data series called Trend. And we can actually use that and that will tell us the 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 trend of the super you know of the super trend. 
So in other words, when the super trend is blue, right, that's a, a long trend. And if it was red on top of the bars, and it that right, that's a downtrend. So we can use this trend here and we need to set our outputs like this. Right, so for the long output, I put greater than A. So in other words, let's see, let's open this up here. All right, so when this this trend, this data series trend is either going to be a positive one for a long trend or a negative one for a short trend. And so the solvers here, if you notice my long output, I set it greater than A. So in other words, when this trend, when this equals a positive one, it's going to be greater than zero. And so that's going to generate a long output. And when this trend, when this trend is short, it's going to equal a negative one. And so our short output here says less than zero. And so we set that to one. So that's how that works. When that trend data series is is positive, it's going to be a positive one. So we have our long output set to greater than zero. And our short output is set to less than zero. So for a negative one. So that trend is going to equal negative one. So we set our short output to be on when it's less than less than zero there. So if we take a look, well, there we go. So there's the um, super trend trend direction telling us. All right. Now the next step is to join them together with a AND node. So we want to make sure that the bar direction is in the same direction as the AND of supertrend. So we'll just connect those together with an AND node. And let's take a look. OK, so there we go. That's an up bar. And the AND of supertrend is in an uptrend direction. Uptrend. So these are down bars. And so there's no output. So those down bars disagree, right? Disagree with the NS super trend that's an uptrend. There we go. There's an up bar, and you get a long signal. So, all right. And let's see. Chris wanted to see this on Renko charts. Uh, there we go. Let's put a Renko chart on there. There we go. All right. So the super trend is in down direction, and we have some down. Oh, I put range. Hold on a sec. Um, okay. There's some Ranko bars. All right. There we go. So we have some down Ranko bars that match with the Anna super trend. Those up Ranko bars, there's nothing. And then we get some more down Ranko bars agreeing with the uh, Anna super trend. And um, all right, yeah. So Chris would like to see how you load this up into Raven. All right. So let's pull up Raven again. Okay, first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that the Bloodhound interface is closed up, and it looks like it is. So now let's pull up Raven. All right, and let's load today's Bloodhound file. So there it is. And all right, let's take a look at the Anna Super Trend and Bar Direction. Make sure it looks correct. Yeah, it looks good. Click OK. So let's set our entry logic down there. OK. So we have our entry logic set. 
And of course, we didn't build an exit logic for this, so we'll just leave that off. Um, right, and um, there we go. I'll turn start auto enabled on, so we'll see some back test. Okay. Oops. Guess what I forgot? Forgot to enable the strategy. There we go. Let's turn that true. Okay. And let's see. Yeah, where my oh yep, the plots got turned off. Okay, there we go. Execution plots, turn those back on. And there you go. So all right, there we go. All right, there you go, Chris. So I'll pull this back up so you can take a look at that. Chris is saying something is wrong with the plot in Raven. Um, yeah, well, Chris, um, you definitely want to make sure that you see the orange button here for Raven. You want to make sure that you know your logic template is set to the logic template that you're trading right because I could put this on the uh, the EMA 100 exit and so you see how Raven down here you know is showing me plots completely different here so I could have Raven showing me any logic template I want here so just make sure that you have Raven telling you or have Raven set to the logic template that you want to see. All right, so you could have Raven showing you, you, or, you know, your exit logic. So if you have built an exit logic, you could have Raven show you your exit logic, but it's still going to be trading the entry logic. All right, so if, if I pull Raven up, let's pull Raven up. So whatever logic template your entry logic is set to, Raven's always going to trade that, regardless, regardless of what you have set up on the chart. All right, Raven is always going to trade this logic template, whatever is set to your entry logic. So this pull down menu here, you know, this is just for visuals. This is just a visual. Um, on the chart there so that way you know if you want to you could you know you could look at uh, you could look at your entry signals right so now we're looking at the entry signals and then you know once Raven enters a trade then you could pull up you know exit signals if you have the exit signals you could pull those up so that way you can see when an exit signal is going to come up you know it's it's kind of your choice you know it's just kind of personal choice you know there's no right way or wrong way but that's just kind of how that's just the flexibility that uh, you know that Raven gives you okay so yeah all right well Chris you probably just have something set yeah you've got something set incorrectly in your your bloodhound template uh, so Chris is saying that uh, Raven appears to be trading the super trend only um, and not the bar direction yeah, so Chris, you know, your logic, your your bloodhound logic is just not quite set up right. That's all. So, uh, yeah, Chris, what you can do, Chris, is um, you can pull up bloodhound, and of course, this for everybody. You know, if you're having trouble getting your bloodhound logic set up correctly the way you want it, you know what what. I would suggest is um, you know you can um, take a screenshot of your logic here take a screenshot of Bloodhound you know have your have your solver selected so like I've got the bar direction selected so you know have that bar direction selected take a screenshot of this and then go down to your next solver 
and take a screenshot of that so we can see you know the how the solvers set up uh, how your other solvers are set up and you know with these screenshots you know that'll help us um, understand um, you know how you have your solver set up and your how your your system logic is set up and from there we can you know we can provide some suggestions as you know what what might what changes might be needed there so and yeah so just take the screenshots and just you know email those into us email those into our support and uh, we'll help you figure out you know what's 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 wrong you know what's not right and also one other thing yeah this is always also this is always very very helpful is take a screenshot um, of the chart and um, you know take a screenshot of the chart and you know you could circle something and um, you could put you know you could put some text on the chart there you know and And you can give us a little note. Um, that's why, um, you know, so you can annotate your chart, and and you know, please provide us more than just this. You know, explain to us <laughs> what is not correct. <laughs> you know, kind of explain to us what's not correct. You know, uh, kind of point out where the signals, yeah, you know, where you want the signals to be. Now, um, you know, give us as much information as you can. Of course, if you did something like that, that's meaningless to us. We would have no idea why that's not correct. So please don't send something like this in. That's a bad example. But, you know, please provide much, much more, you know, detailed information um, in your text to us, you know, and giving us kind of a, uh, you know, you know what they say, a picture speaks a thousand words. So sending in kind of a screenshot of your signals and explain to us, you know, where this, where you think the signal should be and, you know, and, and where it's not correct and where it should be correct. You know, that all helps us understand your idea. And once we understand what your, what your trading idea is, then we can help you, uh, help you uh, get your bloodhound logic uh, set up correctly. So, all right, good deal. All right, so I think that takes care of Chris. And um, I'll just kind of cover real quickly. If you don't have a screen, uh, a screenshot capturing software, um, there's a couple that I recommend. Um, Jing, right? Jing is one from TechSmith. All right, Jing is from TechSmith. And there's another one called Pick, Pick, oops, P I C, P I C K, Pick, Pick. And there you go, Pick, Pick by G N Win. Um, there's another good screen capturing software. So, PicPic has a ton of features. It's a little more, looks a little more involved to use. It's not as simple as Jing is. Jing is very simple, but it's also very basic functionality. PicPic has a lot more functionality to it, but therefore it's going to be a little more involved to kind of learn it. But those are two great screen capturing softwares. So. All right. Yeah, it looks like Mark has the uh, next question here. Um, Mark is asking, all right, how do you test with Bloodhound to see if you are trading um, into a high or low of the day? Uh, and uh, say something like within four ticks of the higher low, of the, of the day's higher low. All right. Well, um, yeah, let's let's get that going here. So let me take Raven off the chart. Yeah, shrink the chart up a little bit, 
and let's put Ninja Trader's higher low indicator on the chart. All right, so I'm assuming Mark is going to be using the uh, uh, what's it called? Current day open high low close. All right. Yeah, let's see. We're not interested in the open, so I'll turn the open off. I'll set it to transparent. And um, all right, I'll make the high and low a little thicker. Okay, just a moment here. I'm going to fade the other indicators back into the background. Okay, so here's uh, the high. Here's that uh, current day open high low close indicator. So there's the current high, and here's the current low for the day. <clears throat> All right, there's our two plots. <coughs> All right, so we want to know if we're getting close to the, the high of the day or the low of the day. And let's start a new logic template. Yeah. Here, all right. So let's. What do we call this? Near um, uh, all right. So near the days high slash low. All right. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab a comparison solver. So you'll notice. You notice how things look a little different here under my solver nodes. Right, and so since I have two different time frames, I can grab a solver, I can make a new solver from either the 10 minute time frame. So here's my new solvers for the 10 minute time frame, or I can add a new solver onto the default time frame. So that's what I'm going to do. So let's grab a comparison solver. All right, so we want to see if um, if price is near the day's high or low. All right, so we're checking price. Right, we're comparing price to the higher low, so let's set A to price. And um, let's see, what should we do? How about we'll make this a little more, I guess, unique. So let's let's use the high of the bar. We'll test to see if the high of the bar is near the high, is near today's high. And we'll see if the low of the bar is near today's low price. All right, and then down here in B, we're going to set this to our our indicator that's tracking today's highs and lows. All right, so let's go find the current day open high low. There we go. Get that selected. Um, let's see. There's really no settings up here that need to be changed, but we do need to select the correct plot. So we'll generate a long signal if price is near the, today's high. And we'll generate a short signal if price is near uh, today's low. So there we go. The current high is set to long. The current low is set to short. Click OK. And uh, let's see. Um, let's see. Yeah, I think we're yeah we're gonna need this 
we're going to need to, to uh, set the output here. So for the outputs that says A equals B, we're going to need to set those to 1. All right, we have to set A equals B to 1. And the reason why is if you look at the description for the other outputs, it says A greater than B and A greater than B. Well, remember A is set to the high. And so the high of the bar is never going to be greater than the indicator. Right? The indicator is always going to keep adjusting itself so that right, so when the indicator is plotting the current day's high, that indicator is always going to be equaling the high of the day. So the price will never get higher than that indicator. So that's why these outputs don't work. So the indicator is always going to equal price. So we need to set this long output and short output here, sections. You know, we need to turn on the A equals B for that. All right, so there we go. So that tells us exactly when price has, you know, equals the high of the day or has made a new high. Right, so that's price. You know, that's price equaling the high or making a new high down here, like so. All right, so now the next step, Mark would like to say, do something like, you know, let's see if we're like within uh, four ticks of that. Uh, actually, I'll just, I'm going to widen this to five ticks so we get more, you know, more signals to kind of work with. And the next thing is I need, I should, yeah, I need to get away from these Ranko bars. Switch to a one minute chart. All right, let's go back to the beginning of the of the day here. Let's see. Here we go. So there we go. We can see right all of these bars here <clears throat> are within five ticks of the current high. And here's a great little visual aid that we can do. There. Just kind of ballpark this. So I made this square approximately five ticks tall. Yeah. There we go. So this square is approximately five ticks tall. Yeah. Yeah, so there we go. We can see all those bars, or the high, I should say, the high of all these bars here are within five ticks of today's current high. And if we go over here, let's see, let's shrink this up a little bit. Yeah, here we go. So we had a new low made. There we go. Now all these bars are within uh, five ticks of the current low. All right there, Mark. So is that kind of what you're looking for? Um. And if you wanted to, you could reverse everything 
so that you get the opposite signals. So, in other words, when price is making new lows, you could reverse Bloodhound's output so that it gives you a long output when we're near, when we're at the lows, you know, and then when price gets up near the highs, you could have Bloodhound generate a short signal if you wanted to. All you need to do is, let's see, we'll have to let's reverse our prices up here. So we're going to set long now to the low price, and we're going to set the short to the high price, and we have to go into the indicator here and reverse the indicator um, long and short like so and let's see yeah I need to adjust the outputs as well so we kind of have to really reverse everything here just do something like that there we go yeah I'll just leave the A equals B that's the only thing I'll leave turned on for our outputs. And uh, yeah, there we go. And we can see the output is reversed. So we can see the short here is telling us, you know, hey, don't take a, a long trade when we're near the high. And it's giving us a kind of a short output here, giving us that warning. So yeah, however you want to, you know, however you want to see this. I'll just kind of put it back to the standard here. There we go. All right. So I'll put it back to this kind of telling us that when, it's, when we see green, it's telling us we're near the high of the day. And when we see red, it's telling us we're near the low of the day. And then whatever kind of distance you want, you just have to go in here and adjust your distances. So if you want four ticks, we can just go in here and adjust that to four ticks, just like so. There we go. Okay, so just keep in mind the key thing here was to turn on the A equals B outputs here. That was the key. All right, Mark is asking, uh, could you then test if you have pushed the high or low of the day? Uh, I guess within the last X number of bars um, or within a given time frame. Let's see. Uh, I guess the, kind of the, the key word here I'm kind of stuck on mark is pushed. Could you kind of uh, explain a little more what you mean by pushed? Um, guessing, let's see here, back to the chart, yeah, so I'm guessing what you're meaning is, uh, you know, if a new lower low has been made for the day, or, okay, if it has touched. Um, oh, okay, yeah, right, okay. All right, so let's modify this a little bit. All right, so this solver is set to Vortex Near. So let me take this and I'll make a copy of it. And we'll change this to price equals the day's high or low. Something like that. All right, so we'll set the distance to zero. There we go. So there's a new solver I just made. So let me put this new solver on the board. So we'll go to existing nodes, and there it is. There's price equals days high or low. Put that on there. Let's plug that in. Okay, so we can see here that we only get, right, we're only getting an output when price actually touches 
you know, touches or makes a new low of the day. Or, of course, if, let's see, and there we go, or if price touches or makes a new high of the day. There we go. All right, so yeah, if you want to, you know, if you want to extend the signal out, so like if you want to, in other words, if you want to, kind of look back and, you know, say, hey, did I make a new high two bars back? Then we can use this look back. Use this look back node here. So this look back node, we're going to set the displacement to zero. And the look back period is basically you just set that to how many bars you want to look back. So let's say, you know, you want to look back four bars to see if a new if a new daily high or a new daily low has been made uh, and then we're going to set the mode to max so let's pull this up so all right so that's just the raw solver that we see on the chart and so the raw solver just has two bars, two bars marked. Now if we plug this look back in, like so, you can see now it take, basically it just kind of takes the signal and extends it out a little bit. And we extended it out by four bars. Actually, the look back period starts at one, so it actually extended it out three bars. So, um, yeah, all right, so uh, there we go, Mark, I think that does it for you. Um, all right, so however many um, bars, you know, there's, um, see yeah okay so yeah I mean the way ninja trader works is that it works by the bar timing so you can't do it by like minutes or seconds or you know something like that you know ninja trader operates on a bar by bar basis so you can have a look back period based on number of bars so, yeah just so you guys know the look back mode the look back mode is only um, is only um, uh, what's the word? Um, it's only it it only functions when the look back period is set greater than one. So if you're only looking back, a look back period of one is basically the current bar. So you can't set it to zero, right? A look back period cannot be set to zero. So basically, a look back period of one is just looking at the current bar. Uh, so therefore, the, the mode um, is not necessary, so it disappears. So it's only when you're looking back at the previous bar does a look back mode um, do have any function to it. So, all right. So there you go. As soon as you set the look back period higher than one, then the look back mode will appear for you. All right. Well, guys, with that, I'll wrap it up and say have a great weekend and uh, happy trading next week. All right, guys, have a good one. Bye-bye.